Welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group, bringing you interviews with Colorado's best real estate and mortgage professionals, empowering you to understand the current trends in the housing market so you can make the American dream your reality. Enjoy today's episode. Well, it's a great day in Colorado, and welcome to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast. Today, we have with us Linda Dobkins, who is a mortgage solution specialist with LD Lending Key. Linda, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Hey, you're welcome. And I um, want to just find out what it was about the mortgage lending industry that caught your attention back. I understand you've been in the industry for over 20 years. So, boy, it must be a wonderful thing to be really, um, you know, uh, dyed in the wool, true to the industry. But what was it back 20 years ago that interested you in the mortgage industry? So 20 years ago, when I started in the industry, initially it was um, on the operation side, which came from processing. Um, And that opportunity um, significantly meant a lot to me because of the opportunity that it bring. Um, And honestly, just, you know, the type of revenue, it was it was a career builder back in 2000. So I uh, took it, ran with it and stuff with it and met, you know, uh, many beautiful people along the way and those relationships and seeing what this could do for me for a big career and branch out in many different in, di- in many different um, avenues throughout that. That's what attracted me and kept yeah. me here. And with operations, were you in underwriting or were you in management? What was that um, foundation? It was twofold. Um, it was actually majority of it was processing. And then I, um, Uh, transitioned over into underwriting. And then through that, uh, it it came into a back-end underwriting of securitizations and bigger different portfolios. So about 15 years into that, um, after many, many conversations with the loan officers I had been working for was you should always go to, you should go to the front side, go to the sales side. You should be up in front of the customers. And um, that just took, that took about 18 years for me to get to the point. (laughs) Just a little while. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and that's simply because uh, operations over to what I do currently was, uh, it was just a different um, pay scale. You went from being, you know, two weeks, every paycheck, nice, bonuses. 200% to, commission. You got it. Yep. You got it. Yep. And that's always a little scary. Um, but well, took I love the job when I hear and- when people start off in underwriting and processing because you cut your teeth for many years on mm-hmm. learning all the intricacies of what makes loans work, not work. You see pitfalls, you see hurdles, you figure out how to make them work. Um, so now on the front side, on the originating side, boy, you've got a really great foundation that um, that is really powerful. So I know that you draw from that so much in, in your originating side. I mean, I couldn't have said it better myself. That truly does tie it all into one. And and that's what I um, truly uh, put my foundation of how I run my business on is I know what I can predict a little bit better what's about to come going forward. And because I have that experience in the background, I'm able to tailor the other part, which is customer service. How do I service my clients better? What can I do above and beyond? And the goal is always to involve the client less in what they need to do to get their loan done. Because I have that experience in the background, I can almost predict it. And that's how I over-service my clients in a way that makes them be able to sit back and have a more relaxed process. Um, And in that experience should be somewhat less stressful. Yeah, I I love the experience that you have there. It really sets you apart from you know, the, the, the competitors and the thousands of uh, loan officers that are out there. Give some specifics on, you, you talked about, you understand the process and everything. Give some specifics there for our listeners on what you do a little bit differently. Uh, one of the things I do differently is, and I tell my clients right from the get-go, the initial call is, uh, I'm going to likely ask you for a lot more things up front than a different originator would. And the reason being is, they're going to ask for it eventually. So why not get it up front? It's called putting that complete picture together from the very get-go. So I know 
everything that I'm working with. I know all of the ins, outs, goods, bads, and the things in between, because it, it really is, it's a moving dynamic. And these layers are 100% dependent on the layer next to them. One shifts, they all shift. So if I have all of my ducks in a row from the beginning, that's how I service my clients the best. You know, the way you explain that is is great because if someone comes to you and you just give them this, you know, nine page checklist of give me all this stuff, Mm -hmm. they could feel overwhelmed. But the way that you phrase that is, let me explain why I need all of these things because yep. I want the full picture and I want to be, and it's really kind of like the old, uh, what uh, Jerry Maguire movie, help me help you. You know, if you yeah. can get this to me, I want to paint the full picture of myself so that I can present it to the underwriters and make sure that you get the best possible program. And that's a really, uh, that's a great uh, uh, notch up, like you said, versus competitors. So having that um, knowledge of what you might need actually saves them effort in the long run. Absolutely. And time is money. So the less effort and time that we can spend on something where we put our trust into a professional that is in this role, that's also what sets me apart. Yeah, absolutely. And and on that note, if I if I may, I do have in that initial call, I have one rule that I tell every client. And they always tend to laugh when I'm done saying it, but they <laughs> but they realize it by by the end of the entire, you know, hour-long call. I said, please, I'm going to be 100% on your side and doing what I can to get you to your goal. And all I ask in return is one thing, always be truthful. I am the third most lied to professional (laughs) in the industry outside of the police and and judges. And (laughs) I'm not sure why people, and, and, you know, truth is truth. And even candy coating it a little bit, what I explained to them is, if you tell me a little bit of truth in this one area, guess what? I'm going down five avenues in the background that might be in the wrong avenues. Yeah. So if you tell me everything up front, we build this trust. And that's what it's about, building that trust up front. I'm only going down avenues that work exactly for you to get you to your goals, your short and long-term goals that we've already discussed during this call. And that's so important. And once I started implementing that into that initial call, it was life-changing. Well, and the other thing too is, it's not like you're going to trick people. You you say you make X number of dollars, give me your pay stubs, your debt tax Mm return. We're going to find it out. So it it does nobody any good to do that. But um, so here's Mm -hmm. a question. Let's let's kind of go deeper on that honesty um, um, concept because it goes both directions. So the borrower needs to be honest with you. You need to be honest with the borrower. And I know you are, but let's talk a little bit about what's another example of how you might look at all these documents that they bring to you and they, they take that rule, they're honest, they bring everything in and you see something like, uh uh-oh, we might have an issue here. They said they made whatever, $10,000 a month. And yeah, they do make it, but that's only because they have huge amounts of overtime or they have a Mm -hmm. big spike in a bonus. And I need to tell them what could be happening down the road. Talk a little bit about how you can kind of prepare them using your transparency, honesty, and, and whatnot. That's the perfect word. Transparency is everything. Um, Outside of transparency, educating the client every step of the way is so vitally important. How do you build that trust? If you're not also explaining to them, if you see something that wasn't quite in line with a conversation, explaining why it isn't. And then going forward, always setting the proper expectations. Um, And people can do what they want with the information that's given, but I don't only explain it uh, verbally. I make sure that after every phone call that that same kind of meeting notes email goes out where it bullet points exactly those points. And, And that's how you get it across. And that's how you build trust. That's how you build that transparency that in essence immediately continues to make that trust level go um, up and up and up more and more. And that's what it's about. This is the biggest purchase that people technically have to finance in their life. So I should do my part every um, step along the way to make sure that they trust me. And and that's where it lays. You know, I do my part. I can go to sleep at night and feel like a good, great professional doing what I need to do. And at the end of the day, I still truly care. 
So caring, having that transparency, building that trust, and and tweaking how you speak to certain clients every step of the way. Some of them want tons of info, give it to them. Some of them want a little bit because that's all they can handle. Just give them that little bit. You have to recognize what kind of client you're dealing with. And and tying your experience and underwriting and processing into trust and honesty, you mm-hmm. can say, listen, I know you told me that the other lender that you had last week that you said that you couldn't do this. I know they, they told you you could do it this way or that way. Let me just tell you something. The underwriter is going to look at it this way. And I was spent 10 years doing underwriting or I spent this many years. So let me just tell you what they're going to look for. And I think that that, like you said, being a teacher, being an educator, helping them understand and not Mm -hmm. speaking down to them, but going, Hey, let me, let's, let's figure out a way to make this work because here's the potential problem. And I think that is such a refreshing uh, perspective that your clients, your borrowers will be experiencing. So that's, that's huge is education based on um, your experience. Absolutely. And, and a lot of it is also recognizing that if there's an issue, it's not necessarily saying, here's the problem. It's speaking to, here's a hurdle that we're upon right now. And I feel also one of my biggest roles is to be that motivator. Yeah. Because as especially as a first-time home buyer and on up that grade, in our city with our prices and the increasing rates, I think also my role is really transition to being a motivator. I hold hands. Um, I do certain things I have never done in my position, which might mean driving to Boulder to pick up documents for a client who is not technically savvy. Yeah. I mean, you just, you don't cut the cut the string where it just goes outside of your role. I, I have completely eliminated that. And it's called what can I do in my position to continue to keep people motivated and empower them, give them that educa- education so that not only are they free thinkers and they can become kind of motivated on their own, but let's teach them all about all of this credit worthiness and what real estate investing can do for you in the long run. And that's where that true benefit comes out with every client is, is that spark of interest in them doing it and them calling me and saying how proud they are that they just did X, Y, and Z that I suggested. And it's working. <laughs> so Linda, do you like reading books, business books? <laughs> That's a interesting question. I, I don't like to read a lot, but I definitely will tap into those audio books okay. um, along the way with professions. So, that then, have, so uh, what yep. you just, you, exp, you exude a, um, what's called the Fred factor. And if you've not read or listened to the, have book, not. the Fred factor, you need to listen to it. It's written by a New York times bestselling author, Mark Sanborn. And he actually is from Denver. I uh, have interviewed oh. him before. I met him a couple of weeks ago in person, but you need to listen or read to that. Cause it's what um, one of those ones, um, talking about going above and beyond the call of duty and how to give extra service. And it's all based on an actual U.S. Postal Service carrier um, named Fred and how he just goes above and beyond. So what you're describing, I love it. Duh, it's it's the right thing to do, but people don't do it all the time because it takes extra effort. It's like, okay, I just want to do my thing and say next, but you are really you know, really amping it up to the next level. So um, let's talk about something because there okay. are times that you need to say no to someone like, or maybe not no, but not now. So what if someone comes to you and it's like, oh, your credit is not where it needs to be. What do you do? How do you help hold their hand and walk them through getting it to where it does need to be? So I, I don't believe in ever telling somebody no, because I believe that there's an opportunity for me to present options. And those options are all a yes. And it's dependent upon a timeline. Um, And that's also a big kind of professional goal of mine. So once you do your complete evaluation and you see that maybe at this moment, it doesn't work, that doesn't, that's not a no. That's called, um, excuse me, client, here's where where we're at. And here's what we can do to make it a yes. A yes is now built on a timeline, and that yes is 100% determined about your your level of motivation and dedication. So I would never want to be told no with something this big um, when someone is reaching out. So that's my duty to turn that no into a yes, but it's going to be a longer timeline than what you thought in our original call. And here's why, and here's what we do, and let's set that timeline and that plan together. 
And that is so much, that feels so much better for the borrower mm -hmm. than nope, next. Then mm -hmm. they feel demoralized. They feel like, Ugh. but what you just said, it's, how you said it, it's like, oh, well, okay, I can wait three months, six months, four, and tell me what to do and let's do it. And then I'll bet you have story after story after story of people that have done that, come back, qualified, gotten the house, and they're Absolutely. like, wow. Those are the ones you yeah. you have to really contain yourself the day before because yeah. you're so proud of them for sticking to the plan that we built together yeah. and the timelines we built. But ultimately, it comes to them doing the work. And all it is is a little bit of extra handholding. Keep that motivation up because you can see they're holding their part. And when you get to that closing table, those first time home buyers, those are the best. I contain myself the night before so I don't go in there super <laughs> emotional <laughs> and look a little, you know, less unprofessional, but you go in there with those ones. And those are the ones that have introduced you. Honestly, work with somebody on their credit. That's what I pride myself on. Why do I, why would I turn you away? They've introduced me to so many of their family members. I've gone to quinceaneras and different birthday parties. It's grandma's whatever wedding anniversary. And you get to meet so many more people in the meantime. That's called a family of financial building. And I live for that. Well, being in the industry over 20 years, I'll bet that you have done a loan for someone to buy their first home. And then maybe they moved and bought the next home and there they are coming back to you. And then maybe even, mm -hmm. have you ever done loans for someone who have the kids ready to buy a home. And it's like, you did mom and dad's house and now here we go. That's, that's a wonderful goal. Um, absolutely. Cause that's, that's also something we speak about in the initial calls. And as we go through it is I'm not only here to teach you the ins and outs of what I know about credit and how to build that score and keep it there and maximize on it. But I'm also here to um, show you how you can build your kids credit by doing nothing else. And there's simple things. And that education right there is so important because number one, once they apply it one time, and see that it works, guess who they think of? Me. Yeah. And then they do it two or three times. Those, those entities that it worked for, they're thinking of me as well because the name is spat out. And that's how networking is so important. And continuing to show up for items that you're invited to throughout those families. And I mean, and there's the instances where they don't use you. And then they call later and they go, guess what? We just tried to do X, Y, Z. It didn't work. And now we're back. We've learned our and lesson. They, they, they're embarrassed almost. <laughs> yep. They're like, I didn't, sure. I didn't reach out to you. And my first, my first words are, hey, that's okay. We all are able to make our own choices. Thank you for coming back to me. Yeah. Honestly, tell me why I wasn't considered to give you the opportunity for that. Because that means I'm lacking in something. What yeah. can I do better? And yeah. let's move on from that. Because it's not a judgment. It's what can I do for you to get you to your next step? Where are you at now? Let's reconvene. I love it. So we've we've successfully talked about how you serve your clients. Let's wrap up with just a couple of your main programs. You, you we talk about buyers. I know you do refinances and throughout. You know how the economy goes up, down, and all around. It'll be like oh, time to refi or time to buy because of rates. Mm -hmm. But what are the um what are the <clears throat> typical uh, purchase type programs that you're helping your borrowers with? So that's twofold. Um, there's a purchase. Um, a uh, repayment program that's out there right now that's just strictly for anybody that's purchasing owner occupied properties and rates are astronomically high um however what this has brought is this secondary market that's non QM where the uh lending professionals are giving this this new repayment option that used to be back here in 2007 2008 and it's the 2 1 buy down um as long as you qualify for the rate that's already on the market, what it what it does for the client is it takes off 2% the first year, takes off 1% the second year, and then you back down to that original rate that you were promised on the note. And that's for your owner-occupied purchasers. Um, that That's beautiful because it continues to put, you know, a little bit extra money and it alleviates, it's called sticker shock. This yeah. These are sticker shock rates for Denver Metro. For right now, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and <clears throat> on the on the other side of it, it's um, this is the best time for real estate investors, anybody that's into fix and flips, whether you have experience or not, 
again, this non-traditional world of mortgages, DSCR is where it is at. That just simply stands for debt service com- um, consumer resource. And it's a silly word, but what it's done is it's allowed these investors that are usually self-employed and you start looking at tax returns, it gets yucky. They just said, you know what, that's that's a different world. All we give a you know, what we um, are going to care about in this aspect is this property you're looking at to purchase as an investment purchase, we're only going to qualify you on what's expected for this property to do in the future, that rate of return. It's, and those rates are very comparable to the regular mortgage purchase as an owner occupied world. Um, It can't get any better for real estate purchasers these days to look at that and, and have somebody experience price that out for you. And that that's just a simple explanation of it. There's a dozen different repayment terms, down payments that can trigger from that. And it's that's a beautiful world. Well, I love it, Linda. And if anyone is listening to this going, wow, this is a breath of fresh air. I need to have a little bit of Linda Dobbins in my life to help guide me. <laughs> what, a little bit best? of Linda. Yeah, really. I, I, I tried to sing that, but you wouldn't know, know the tune. I'm a bad singer. So if you, uh, if someone's interested in reaching out and learning more and then connecting with you, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you? Um, absolutely. Call me. Call me 720-326-0846. That's my work cell phone. You can go onto my website, www.thelendingkeys.com, um, um, or you can um, email me, um, ldlendingkeys at grovescapital.com. Um, any of those ways are perfect. The cell phone is best. I pick up. If I don't, if I don't get it right away, within an hour or two, you'll definitely have a call back. Well, Linda, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure having you on. Mike, Mark, thank you so much for having me and allowing me to speak to what I do. Um, It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Colorado Real Estate Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Trailstone Insurance Group. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.coloradorealestateleaders.com.